Hi friends, David here from Above AVL and Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video, I want to share as we're kind of getting into the season this year, getting busy, five sequencing tips and tricks that are a little bit more advanced. Like they're not super advanced, but just five tips and tricks, things you might not be aware of. Maybe you're aware of some, but not others that are going to make sequences that you make look better and do a better job. And also the most important thing, save you time and frustration. Let's dive in. So I am here in X lights and I've just got my house here and I've just got a sequence. I've got a basic timing track on it. No music just so that we don't violate anybody's rights and use any music that, you know, belongs to other people. Um, and we've got our house here with some modifications that my 11 year old has made to it that may or may not happen, but regardless, we've got some stuff to work with here. Number one, first tip is using the timing track as a value curve. So right here, I've brought in the circle effect and you see, it's actually flashing every time there's a timing track hit. And so if you're not familiar, timing tracks can be generated a lot of different ways. They can be generated automatically from your music at each beat, at each measure, etc. And those can be super duper helpful because they allow you to kind of sync effects to it. And this is one of the ways you can do it. In some effects, there's ways to just kind of select a timing track, but in others, you're going to use the value curve. So let me show you how. So we've got this effect here, right? And we've got our number of circles. Okay. And we just, you know, We've got it going along. It's like, whatever, it's fine. It's kind of just flowing along. But if we want it to go to the music, then we would go ahead, we would add a timing track. In this case, uh, oops, I just reinstalled x -Lights and I don't have the QM vamp installed. Always install that, guys. But regardless, you would go ahead and, you know, have it listen to the music, grab the beats or the bars, and then you'll get something where every beat or every measure, you've got a tick. And we're gonna pretend that this 100 millisecond track, this green one, is that to the beat, okay? So now, I'm gonna take one of these parameters here of just this circles effect, and it can be any effect because most effects use, have the ability to use value curves and X lights. And instead of using one of these, maybe you've used these ones before, we're gonna go down to the bottom to ones that people don't use. So you can use one like music and it kind of listens to the music and it does an okay job, but the best job is going to be timing track ones. So there's a couple here, play around with them. They're all a little bit different between whether they toggle or they fade in, etc. But just taking the ability to go and adjust, okay, it's going to adjust based on the timing track it's gonna flash. You set that timing track down here. You can offset the time if you need to, typically you don't, and then press okay. And now what we have here is, and I know it's hard to tell because we're not using real music, but we have something where it's actually flashing to the music, um, to the beat of the song, and it's a lot easier than making a bunch of little tiny effects that kind of start and stop. Number two. If you're not familiar with the warp and kaleidoscope, now is a great time to get familiar with it. It is a fantastic tool. Like say you've got something like, you know, this, the lightning effect is a pretty good one where you can go ahead and you can place that on your, your models, right? And it's just a little tiny effect. Like you can add, you could try to add more stuff in it, but ultimately it, <sighs> it never really covers that much of the canvas as a whole. And you might like what it's doing, you just don't like that, for example, it's like only working on this one tiny tree in the middle of my whole lawn, right? So how do we do it? Well, we'll right click, we will insert a layer or multiple layers. Okay. Pop this guy in the middle just for fun. And then in this case, I'm gonna use the kaleidoscope. The warp is very similar. So that's the warp and kaleidoscope is over here. And they're just gonna allow you, as you can see, even in default settings, it now duplicated that across the whole yard because it's like a kaleidoscope, that's the point. And so you can even add in rotation, which can look really cool. But essentially, you know, you're gonna mess around with some of the parameters and find what works best for you. But essentially, you're gonna be able to take whatever's happening below and, and duplicate it and spread it across that whole canvas, which can be super helpful. Definitely something worth playing around with. Kaleidoscope and Warp, very similar, slightly different, allows you to basically really 
duplicate some effects that are really small, have it take up your whole display or your whole prop that you're using and be good to go. Next, audio speed. If you're not familiar, under this audio tab, you can speed up or slow down the speed of the audio. Okay, so you just select this, play your audio, and it's gonna go at that reduced rate. Okay, super, super, super helpful if you're doing uh, a very quick song or a very detailed song where you really wanna get in the weeds on placing those effects right in the right place on the timeline. Slowing it down is not only gonna make it sound like a monster or a dragon or something is singing, but it's going to make it much easier to line things up precisely. You'll be able to zoom in, you know, be looking at the audio waveform, be looking at uh, the effects, line them up perfectly and check it. And then when you play at full speed, it's gonna look perfect, usually. Next, oh man, this is a fun one. So, say we go back a little. So one of those new effects, and I know, you know, everybody, a lot of people, right? You open up X lights like once a year, you know, you, you start in the fall and you're like, man, what happened since last year? What's new? What did I miss? And one that you may have missed is right over here. It's called the duplicate effect. This one is so cool. So this one helps so much because obviously like in X lights, you can go ahead and you can take an effect and you can copy it and you can paste it, right? And you can have it on multiple elements. And then, you know, maybe you go and you're like, hey, I wanna adjust, you know, the colors on this lower one. And then I go and I select them both and I'm like, okay, well, I wanna adjust the size of both and then I wanna update all of them. Um, but now if I click yes, this one, you know, it, it, I got them all, but it wasn't the best workflow. And now I've got to go change my colors back on this lower one, right? Duplicate effect. So much stinking easier. Just grab it, drop it in. And the beautiful thing about it is one, you get to select any model that has effects on it. Okay. It's going to match the effects at that time. So for example, I can be like, oh, I want to match this effect for the first half of this section, and then I want to do a butterfly on the second half. I don't know why, but, you know, it's an example, right? And so I would go ahead, you know, now I'm running these effects. First half, duplicate, second half, butterfly, but it gets better because the duplicate effect allows you to work with uh, individual layers, so you don't have to duplicate every layer of another model, meaning that you can get something that looks similar, but not exactly the same to what you have on the other prop. Awesome. And then you have the ability to override sections, which is awesome. So you can do your palettes, your color settings, you know, your layer blending, whatever you want to adjust basically out of these top segments, you can do it individually on this effect and have it different than the effect it copied from, yeah. And so that's really rocking because now you're like, hey, I'm gonna do the same thing on this other prop, but I'm gonna change the color. You can do that, and it is a beautiful thing. Number five, last quick uh, tip for sequencing that you know is gonna save you time, save you frustration this year, are render styles. So if you have not messed with render styles, you are missing out. The amount of effect you can get is going to depend on the type of effect playing, but a good example is the single strand effect. Okay, so we put that on our arches here. Okay, and you see that running now. It's just flashing left to right. It's going really fast. And so let's just go ahead and make that a lot bigger. There we go. So it's going left to right, which is the default render style, right? It's just for this effect, that's what it's doing. The render style can do a lot for you. So for example, if I go as a single line, okay, now, hopefully you can see it. Instead of, yeah, we'll slow it down because you'll see that instead of chasing across all of those strands, it actually goes and it's actually tracing them out. Now it's actually in the order they're wired in. And so it's a little funky right now. It could use a little bit of help, uh, but there's a lot of options in here. So for example, you could do per model single line. Okay, now each one is doing its own thing. Okay, you could do each one as an individual pixel and now it's gonna bounce through them all, maybe individually, maybe not. You can do it per different previews. So if you have multiple previews and you want to pick a different preview for it to run by, 
you totally can do that. Some of these also, by the way, really can help. So for example, even if I go with like just a per model default, um, or sorry, per preview, then I can switch the camera. So I can do the front 2D, that's the default, but I can also do it from the top, which in this model doesn't make a lot of sense. But if I do it in the left, it runs the other way. If I move this to something with more dimension, like my mini trees, okay, and then I do it from the top, now it's mapping this effect across all my yard stuff from a top view instead of a front view. So it's gonna give it a different look. So if you enjoyed this, guys, I appreciate you here. Thanks for subscribing. You know, we're in the midst of the season. When you need gear, we appreciate uh, if you'd give us your business at Above AVL. We strive to have really high quality stuff so that we don't have to deal with warranty claims, which means you have a less stressful season and we offer some of the best prices out there, especially by the caseload. We just try to make it easy for you guys to have really competitive prices and, uh, you know, be able to get you the stuff you need and serve you really well. Also, if you're not aware, if you've never purchased from us before, all orders over 149, at least at the time of this recording, um, ship free from UPS Ground or FedEx Ground, um, UPS FedEx. Um, so um, that's something that like no other vendors do. So you order it, we get it out really quick. We get it to you fast and free over 149. And so you can't beat that with a stick. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate you and I hope you have a great day. See you over at Above AVL. And of course, you're on the channel if you're subscribed. Bye.